because we couldn't actually close out the bunch that they had. Right. And we just have to see. I want to see like small adaptations in the ban phase here, for example. Um, Rise, of course, needs to be banned because Rise is just a champion that it's stupid. It should not be open. And Trundle, of course, one of the big champions, Lissandra. Overall, I like this a lot more. Do you think the Lulu will get through? Do you think Ever didn't see Lulu as that big of a threat? It has, it has to be banned, I think. It should not get through, no matter what. I felt like QG definitely in these two games show, sh showed why they were, th like, they were dominant. They, I felt like they had the game in their hands in the second game. Right. And with that in mind, I felt like they still look like the favorite base of these two games. With that in mind, Lulu is open. I really, really hope they first pick it here. I think it just comes back to uh, QG's identity and that they do play to the level of their opponent. Now remember, this is a team that only went through a single split of competitive play and True. placed second in the LPL, barely missed out on their chance at Worlds. This is probably, I think this is the most established roster coming into IEM Cologne. They've been right. together the longest. So, I mean, it should be expected that they would have a much better performance than at least we saw initially in their Dignitas series and their Fnatic series. Yeah, for sure. I feel like Eva's plan in this particular ban, ban phase is to bait QG into the Lulu and pick up the Dr. Mundo and the Lissandra. Straight up. Okay. Yeah, the Mundo does get through this Mundo's time. Open, and yeah. We've seen how strong that was the few times it was picked so far this weekend. Of course, not as much of a priority as you guys originally predicted, but wouldn't be shocking to see that picked up for Ares here on the red side. Because, like, Athena seems very comfortable in the Varus into the Lulu matchup because he was pressured very hard in that game, but still he had a massive seat advantage towards the end. Yeah. He was harassed quite a bit, though, so it'll also depend on kind of which jungler Swift decides to pick up. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, well, it's, we'll leave we it know, open. It's still know. a mystery for now, Dexter. <laughs> Come on, play no, along. <laughs> Mundo should be locked in Warriors, and there's no excuse to not lock it in because if you give Lulu and Mundo to the enemy, you, you should probably like ask for a remake in the draft already because there's open probably it. no way you can win. But <laughs> Tristana, okay, Tristana has been like a pick that was a bit like slept on probably at the start of the tournament, and now teams start to realize. Hey, there's more than Lucian and Misfortune. It's actually Tristana. And she does like a lot of work in these games here because we see these games are going to a stage where Tristana can just overtake the game. Forgiven had a really good performance on Tristana, granting H2K that one win they had. Also last game, it was like Tristana's story pretty much. And overall, yeah, I think it's a really strong pick. Oh, no, I was just going to kind of break down, you know, why you would never give Lulu Mundo to someone. Uh, obviously, he runs really <laughs> fast and making him run faster and then making him giant in front of everyone on their faces. Uh, yeah. Just to kind of like emphasize that point. But I really like Trundle here. Uh, again, anything that can slow down or disrupt Mundo kind of in the back line. Uh, likewise, they may want to try to go for lane dominance again. And by picking up Trundle and Misfortune to try to face off against Tristana, you pull away from the support that can really interrupt Tris or Misfortune's ultimate. So I think that they'll actually go back that direction. And as looking at the tendencies of QG throughout this tournament, is it has never been about their bot lane. It's always been a stalemate. It's always been a farm fest. And with that in mind, I feel like Tristana is a good choice. Right. Kind of just take advantage of that and say, you want to play a slow game, we'll play a champion who can kind of take advantage of that. The Rek'Sai coming back out for QG. Rek'Sai also pretty successful jungler so far this weekend. Definitely no slouch in the jungle yeah. role. Rek'Sai just probably provides the best early game pressure alongside Elise, but Rek'Sai is a bit stronger in my like in that regard because he has more creative uh, ganking paths. And if you fully abuse that, you can actually do a lot of work in the early game while also providing, like especially with Lulu, Lulu and Rek'Sai together have like a really great synergy because you can potentially get that double knock-up. Yeah, I feel like definitely the first game uh, we saw how to play the Rek'Sai on Swift's side. It was, he was all, it was all about making sure you know where the Elise is and eventually you outscale the Elise. But the second game we definitely saw how not to play a Rek'Sai. You were always behind. <laughs> the Nidalee was always ahead in these ganks. So we see a... Uh, Lissandra being picked up. I don't like Lissandra into Lulu that much, so it's probably gonna go top lane anyway. And overall, like, Oriana is still open, right? We haven't seen a lot of Oriana, but I think it's like a really good matchup actually for Oriana if she just goes mid into the Lulu. Because top lane Lulu is not that strong, so QG has to pick up a top lane, like a more carrier oriented top lane here. And maybe they actually opt Ooh. for the. Oh, and the Vayne, uh, we spoke about Vayne. this yesterday. Vayne just naturally good against Mundo when you take everything yeah. else apart and you just look at those two. But overall, composition-wise, how do you see this now? Yesterday it was very clear that Vayne pickup was smart by Ever. The problem here is that the problem with Vayne, in, in, in the game we saw, she was against the Sivir. Tristana is very strong into the Vayne in the matchup, also right. later into the game, because there's this massive range disparity. So I kind of have to disagree with this one. 
Yeah. Does it get solved at all if they lane swap, or do you think it's still a little bit risky? I mean, of course they can try to match the, the lane swap. The risk with the lane swap against a Tristana is that she's going to have so much more pushing potential, so you would open up the chance that you could just get fast pushed on due to the satchel and Vayne not having, you know, the pushing power that right. Trist has available. Okay, then. So, Vayne. Yeah, I don't like the Vayne pick, too. It's simply it's like because... Good it, it, you just pick it when it fits, and... Everything point to like a vein pick because of a really good matchup. But right now, if you don't have a good matchup as a vein, it's very hard to actually get going to the lane as like an even vein. You probably get your shit pushed in, and then the tower probably gets decimated at like 10 minutes, and then yeah. it opens up the map. Vayne doesn't really have time to scale, and then that's like the biggest problem I see here actually for QG. The one thing though is that Vayne is the pocket pick for TNT. He's very comfortable on this. Kind of one of their top two AD carries was either Vayne or Callista, and they would usually tandem this with uh, Janna or Alistar. So this is definitely something that QG Reapers understand how to run. All right. To some extent, maybe it seems like. There's... Just to add one final point, Chor, before you cut to the break. Oh, yeah. The, the, the virus, the difference in this one is the fact that Trundle is on the other side. Trundle is really good with virus, but it's also really good against the virus. So I, I would watch out for that if I was Athena. All right. Well, we'll see. Can TCT and TNT basically eyes both on them, the Trundle and the Vayne? How are they going to work out as we go towards the later portions of the game? We'll find out in game number three between QG and Ever. The Ledger sits at an even 1-1 one, one here at IEM Cologne, and we definitely have a game on our hands. Of course, with both teams already having their first games picked up. Kind of a bit of a best of three on our hands here, of course. And again, draft, some interesting things coming into the mix. We see the return of the Vayne here as well, and another Varus pick here coming up for Athena. It's a more risky Vayne pick, and the Varus, it's kind of a line boy. We saw them commenting it on the desk. Uh, I believe it was Yamato talking about how Trundle's very strong with Varus. Of course, you throw down that pillar and you can snipe because they have so much less room to juke, you're more likely to hit a line skill shot. The big thing to consider, no Alistair support means when it comes to the turret dives, maybe the Varus will get through laning a bit easier. But when it comes to the team fights, that pillar, it can do massive work. I mean, they're definitely going to be keying off right now on Athena, but in all honesty, they really want to look at this Tristana. Loken, when he came online, came alive, firing bullets about as fast as he possibly could. And they couldn't stop the siege. This time around, they've still got plenty of siege and poke. First infected cleaver is going to hit Q in the back. And you can see ESC Ever, they are playing a much more aggressive start to this one, going deep for the warding. I already have a wide smile. This, of course, is the Mundo Mundo skin. So I heard the squeaky cleavers coming through. <laughs> so Expect good. plenty of those to come through during the course of this game. So obviously when you're seeing a vein picked up here as well, and TNT doesn't have himself that comfortable matchup that we saw against uh, from Loken against that Sivir of Forgiven yesterday, this lane swap warding is essential. So they can see if QG are actually trying to uh, shepherd that vein away from that nastier matchup and try and read it. You just think about Vayne Trundled. What does Trundle offer Vayne in the early game before she has, say, a Blade of the Rune King or the ultimate for chase potential? When it comes to the laning phase, it's going to be a bit of a rough one for Vayne. So avoid that 2v2 when you can. It's true, but they do have the potential to grab an all in if they can pop properly position the pillar and the uh, condemn, but it's so hard to pull something like that off early. Also, we're talking more of a level six on. I guess True. the ultra gimmicky level two uh, E into the wall into Trundle pillar, perhaps, but avoid that very uh, risky early laning phase and then swap back when Vayne has at least a bilge water or the makings of some of her attack speed items. Yeah. Yamato did foreshadow a, a more difficult lane for TNT on that vein, and it is going to be the 1v1 assignment here now, as V already fancies some early aggression. He's positioned forward in the lane. Crazy as well, just back up a little bit there as well, but V getting aggressive. Ward went down there as well in case the teleport was required so early on in the piece here, but none will come. Unlucky spot for the vital, though, so can't really do any more than that. Took a little bit of damage from the minion aggro, but all said and done, still fairly evened out. TCT and TNT down on this bottom side. They are into the 2v2, as much as they may not have wanted to take it. He traded a bit of damage onto him, but only the bomb goes onto TNT's head. However, he's going to have a hard time farming against this, so far, very aggressive Loken. And some of our viewers, of course, will be unfamiliar with Chowdo, and specifically TNT. Vayne is a TNT trademark. This is a champion that kind of accentuates his flaws and also his skill as a player. He's not a strong laning phase. Uh, player. He's just not really strong in the laning phase. The champion Vayne, not strong in the laning phase either. But the things that TNT has done consistently on Vayne in the late game, at times, 
beggar belief. So he has a lot of potential to go off if we see once again another one of these farm fests, specifically in the 2v2 lane. A player that has more than once said that he is the worst 80 carry in the LPL, TNT. Whether that's humility or just, just not much confidence in oneself here, you have to definitely respect what he's been able to do in this game so far. That's very true, but on the other hand, you know, maybe he's still talking a lot of his region up because this is a... China in general has spawned so many fantastic 80 carries over the years. And imported some good ones too. That's very true. <laughs> Grabbed a couple of them. And, you know, they haven't all been doing so bad, but we'll go back into this game. Let's zero in on it as Crazy and V continue to trade in the top side. So this is a matchup that gets worse and worse for Crazy, and it's not, not starting that good either as we see this trade on the map. It's one of those situations where when Fiora either picks up a QSS or can just just disregard the ultimate and still do the close speed. Remember, once you get level 9, once you get some CDR, so much mobility on this Fiora, you're going to be looking for the map plays if you're Lissandra. Obviously. Later in the game when the ultimate's available, but the laning phase started off rough. This matchup not going to get much better for Crazy, so it's going to be map-wide plays or just really a lot of suffering for Crazy. So tagging Addendum on there is again uh, V going aggressive towards Crazy, forcing him to get back. He hasn't picked Fiora before. Here we go. Though. And Ares though coming forward, infected Cleaver won't hit, but he's going to have the red buff and slow, just a blue. Sorry for Ares now as well, but it's going to be enough to slow up V as he tries to escape. Bottom lane as well, still some back and forth here as well as Key hoping to get up close and personal. It's a pillar going up there, TNT out towards the back and it's TCT soaking up most of the damage or at least being a threat. And that front line trying to keep that vein as safe as possible. All about keeping the CS equalized as possible in a difficult 2v2. No lane swap was be able to be achieved, so Spain will struggle through it early. That was doing just fine, as we can see on our screen, only a, a small CS advantage. Just a lot to respect the moment that Key starts to walk up on this Alistair. Yeah, and they've, they've definitely learned to play a little bit further back. Of course, when you do have that Vayne lane and Trundle, it's going to be so hard to make a lot of aggressive counterplays until, as you've mentioned earlier, get up to, at the very least, a bilge water cutlass. However, Swift is looking to go act up to the top. He's not on as hyper-aggressive a champion as this time, but Crazy has been already chunked low. That's very crazy. smart. Return from Ares. Will he get there in time? Flash comes in as well, and first blood already for Swift. He'll drop to the tower aggro. Took a little bit more damage than he should have there in the one for one. Ares did get there for the experience, but it was smart of him to come. He was maybe a little bit slow, but he was aware of the dive threat that was coming through. Ends up picking up the experience, but nice gank pathing from Swift. Barring the uh, miscalculation with the turret. That'll be a bit of a saving grace there, as they didn't give a kill away. Just the execute. Meanwhile, Key goes in on the bottom. TNT's already low. CT will come forward just for a moment here as well. But again, TNT facing some pressure, and you can see now that CS discrepancy starting to uh, manifest here in this bottom lane. But you just see what happens. When you think of other melee vein matchups, what I mean is melee supports in vein, for example, Braum vein or Leona vein. Usually, when Shana walks up, throws the explosive charge on the AD carry, you do something to disengage. Trundle, realistically, okay, the pillar might cancel one auto attack, but he doesn't have a stun early in the game. He doesn't really have any way to dissuade the trades. So the damage trades, they're always going to be good for the Shana, but they're just exemplified by the poor support matchup in the lane for TCT. Oh, you're right. But this is also QG recognizing their own weaknesses. Yes, they're maybe playing into them as well by sure. taking a very weak lane matchup, but they've always picked for the team fights, for the times they can get together. This Trundle pickup is not about the 2v2, it's about the Mundo. And in the last game we saw, it was a late game Tristana coming against them. It was really the big deal here as well, and we really would like to have QG, that is, have a good team fighting phase, and through that, of course, bouncing in towards the later stages here. Again, a lot of damage being dealt, and, and like you pointed out, Papa Smith as well, Loken knows exactly what he can do as well, and he is doing what he can to slow things up here. There's Swift, though, as well, as Ares actually just coming straight forward as well, and this aggression, obviously, he's level 6, Swift only level 5, he's caught up, the Umbaro comes through as well, and won't oh, have to flash away, he's got to be caught by Doom B, he will get that kill. Doom B, though, Chains of Corruption will easily wrap him up. It's going to be a trade-in. Worth noting that more resources were used. They left lane earlier in the bottom lane only for a 1v1 equal trade. Eris, he had aggression because he knew the Alistair and the Tristana were coming to back him up, but just went crazy against Ignite. Didn't respect the summoner from Doinby. Level 6 ultimate first, level 6, level 1 ultimate. Doesn't really contribute much for the Mundo, barring the haste from the movement speed and pays the price. And now in the bottom lane as well, there's the condemned back, I think. See, TNT was hoping to catch Loken on towards that pillar, but he didn't. Still, though, the fight doesn't really develop, develop too much from there on out. But again, Loken always coming forward here as well. Was happy to fight for that farm. Keep on pushing TNT and TCT back under their own turret. 
However, they do allow them to pick up a little bit of it as they alleviate pressure to go place a few wards around the side. So far, the junglers have not spent a lot of time in this bottom lane, but it was pretty much the same story we saw the last time around. And this time, however, Ares has had a much better start despite being left a little bit low. And there is the pillar combined with the bomb. JCT wanted to come forward here as well. Level 6 being hit for both those supports, and it's just TNT without his at this stage. So, understandably, some aggression coming out here as well. But again, it's just these little bursts of fighting happening, and Ares fancies himself something out towards the top side. You can see on the bottom side of the map, Swift is trying to come to relieve pressure. Although 10 CS doesn't look like a lot, as Crazy is able to open some space between the AD carries. Oh, grand challenge. He's trying to bait this in because Ares was in the bush the whole time. The infected cleaver does connect, but V has already got himself enough distance, enough breathing room away. Won't be able to escape the trap. This time around, they really were able to keep Crazy nice and safe. There's the pillar they've caught Loken. He's got to jump it away, but he was stunned up for just a moment. TNT still doesn't have the damage. Neither of these AD carries have backed yet. And yes, of course, you're go going to win a CS game as a Vayne in most cases, but this is TNT picking it up where he can. Just Swift controlling the bottom side of the map, of course. We saw Ares on the top side meant that the CS gap start to get smaller. It's only a couple of CS. And remember, Tristan's been sitting on a potion, despite being full health. Hasn't managed to get home. That's up to Chains of Corruption. Gonna be caught towards Doon B. A very cheeky attempt to steal away this blue, and they might pay for it with their lives. Key does get in with the knockup, and Doon B is gonna drop one more. Just a press on him would take him out. And TCT as well, finding himself similarly in trouble. Loken already used a rocket jump, so he's forced to flash. And he goes sword. to full forgiven on that one. Almost gets the second kill, and the arrow will not connect. TCT was well out of harm's way, but the dragons going over. They picked up a kill, nearly another one, ever showing that they have coordination here. Actually, the price seeker was super close. TNT's waiting in the wings, looking for anybody coming through. But it was a nice collapse, and specifically, you can see that Varus I think he's got a lot of practice on this champion as he's been hitting a very difficult to hit skill shot. It was definitely the most missed ultimate of any ability for the longest time when we saw Varus AD carry be a pick pick, specifically in Europe, but hitting that ability quite easily here. Yeah. Yeah, it was a very close thing to start too, as we see TNT in his ever just, or rather Key just trading back and forth for a second as he didn't expect him to in the brush. But I wanted to talk about that pillar placement from TCT because that was the only thing that really stopped Ares from being able to charge right on in and really, really make it a lot worse for QG. So I look forward to mid here from Athena just to make sure that he's not losing too much of that farm. Of course, as he is actually getting himself out in front here as well. Doon B not really able to apply a great deal of pressure towards him. And Speaking of pressure, blue buff towards Doon B, but that top lane as well. It is crazy, starting to fall behind by a lot more. Here's the thing, he didn't even get that kill, of course. It was an execute, I think, on, on the push up towards the top side when the gank went down. So, you know, missing out on a lot of gold that would have helped him through this very difficult period. But the big benefactor was, of course, Mundo walking up, picking up the experience. He's actually been consistently ahead. He's actually fallen behind just recently. He's been doing a little bit more roaming and trying to relieve pressure, but Mundo... He's scaling up. We know about Mundo. Every time we've seen a Mundo get towards that late game phase, barring, of course, being shredded down by a Vayne, which TNT has available, he's been able to do a lot of work. And this Vayne has a lot to navigate. He doesn't have the strong split pushing matchup. He doesn't have the 1v1 versus Sivir, for example, that justified the Loken pick last game. And he also has point and click CC coming through for multiple members of Evan. Uh oh, TCT, he's going to be caught between three members, and they will just barely get the knock up. The pillar doesn't go exactly where it needed to, and TCT is going down. Loken will take his second kill. But why of is the he? Game. Why is he there? That's that's the big question. Is Trundle? It's not like he has AOE wave clear. His Same AD carry had already left. That's just a mistake from TCT. Timing definitely not on their side in that case. And yeah, you see TNT now just walking back to lane, wondering what the heck happened in his absence. Loken has taken away that tower now. Obviously, always the objective focus in your mind. If you're playing that Tristana, you want to push them down. But look at the flow on effect. You give up the kill on the squad. That doesn't sound like the worst thing. You lose a turret and you lose massive vision on the bottom side. Almost all paths to the bot side jungle have been found. And speaking of being found, Harry's going to get a bit of a love tap as he walks away. Yeah, that third auto attack of Silver Bolts there as well for TNT. An appreciable amount of damage even in the early all, stage. It's all a flow on effect of TCT giving up his eye. Let's just count this. Bottom of the map control is Lulu. That's it. Ares trying to back away from this one as well. He was ignited as well to mitigate some of that reach here, but still there's going to be enough for him, and he's managed to get far enough away. But Crazy might have other things in mind. He wants to lock someone down as he goes straight towards Swift. Looking for even more here. Teleport's coming in, and Crazy's just bailing on out. QG look to try to turn this around. No one's gone down so far. Ares stunned against the wall, but Key gets a massive knockup on everybody right into the chain. Chains of Corruption come out. Key will eventually fall. Ares is not going to be too far behind. He has to back off, and V is going to flash out in front of him. Double kill for TNT. 
Point and take care of that one, of course, now. As crazy as well is going to be chased on down. TNT, another one for him would be devastating for a team of Ever who've been trying to shut that bank down. Two kills for him and the three for zero. The chasing mobility on QG's side with the whimsy, with Vayne and the speed up, meant that the moment that they had their threats uh, divided up, things went really boy. We'll see that in effect here. Eris overstays, honestly. He's trying to poke around. He knows that he has Varus coming in, and the Fiora will be second to react. So we'll wait to see the big factor in this fight. Honestly, the pulverize from Key was massive, but where's the follow-up? It's not going to happen. Varus, he doesn't want to hard initiate. He doesn't want to do anything. So as we're watching this fight, crazy. He's already used all of his spells as expected. Athena at the top wants to poke from range, but no one else can all in. And with this hyper mobility, whether it's the trundle, so whether it's the trundle speed up, the whimsy speed up, all the other closing down, things honestly went as good as possible forever in the majority of that fight. Yeah, and even so, they lost three members. They exactly. could have actually gotten wiped on the on the side of that. They grabbed two towers, but you could just see a split second, and QG were able to turn it around with what they do best, the team fighting maneuvers. And with that, they get themselves right back even in the gold game. Yes, they're down two turrets, but if they can get another fight like that, they can even it out, and then some. And Vayne out of nowhere. Blade the Ruin King, 2-0-1. Yep. One. one mistake from TCT. Gold goes to the whole of Ever. Remember, shared gold from these turrets coming down. The mistakes from Ever, the gold goes almost purely to TNT. And we'll wait and see where that pendulum swings in the next 10 minutes or so. Nothing makes me sadder than seeing a, an incredible pulverize there with no follow-up. But he has seen look, they made the rotation of Loken towards that top side again. We've seen him do it before. Now I'm really thinking about those turrets a little bit more. And QG, I mean, this is not the first time they will fall behind uh, by quite a large amount of turrets here. Uh, this is the plan that they're trying to do, at least in miniature. Two tanks on the front, or tanky members rather, while Loken sits in the back and just pegs away at the turret. This time though, QG have the defense mounted and they're bringing even more people to try and keep them at bay. Down on the bottom, of course, V and Crazy are all in the area, but it's V who's actively pushing off as the Ghostblade proc for Athena comes in. They want to finish this one off quick. They want the minion wave to come in faster. They have the tempo advantage. QG have to be very careful. See, the Swift is going to eat a cleaver there right out in front. There's quite a lot of siege damage coming away from the side of ESC Ever, and we're not surprised to see that at all from that draft, but they still haven't got themselves that tower. Although I'd say they'll probably linger for another wave if they can. Athena shows no sign of wanting to back out. I mean, if Lissandra can't get the push onto mid, it's going to be a turret trade. Fiora, without teleport, should not be able to equalize resources. Okay, this is where the clear put call needs to come. Are they going to seed this top turret and potentially lose a lot of health in the mid for just a trade? Ever have the insight here, and they force QG to back off. They knew they couldn't save this one. Carry, Crazy, rather, still did a whole lot of damage to that turret before Swift could even arrive. The push is still on the top, and now QG have to back away. V couldn't even get to the turret. This is a great move for Ever right now. Really poor macro plan. It's being doubled down on by Ever. So Ever not really taking any prisoners right now. Key is sort of knocked away, but the ultimate comes out. Subjugate being used there by TCT. But no follow-up fight really occurring off the back of that one here. ESC can reset. They can jockey back and forth here as Key will head back. So will probably the rest of Ever. If there was a, a pooled turret health indicator of what happened over that two, three minute uh, span, Ever got such a big advantage in terms of turret health rolling down on multiple turrets. And it was just a mistake, honestly, by QG. The shot calling has to be clear. When you don't have teleport, like V didn't have teleport, and you can't even account for the Lissandra, if you're going to defend the turret, it has to be the mid one, just because you have the shorter movement from mid turret to top turret. All you need to group is five and try for a fight. The result was they lost the maximum. They will pick up, not the Baron this time, but of course, the good old Rift Herald. And See if that contributes to some of their minion wave control pain that they've had in the last couple of minutes. Well, they may be able to push it back, but QG, the distance this time was so well respected by ESC ever that they were able to push down both those turrets. Of course, the one that they got the damage on in the middle, there just wasn't any response until Swift decided to come there. You know, clearly, looking at Swift this game, he just doesn't look nearly as comfortable as he does when he gets to play early and aggressive. When they have to use him for more utility, for more uh, map pressure control without trying to pick kills, he's just not quite in his element as Dragon's being started by Ever. 
That's right, and the teleporter come in as well. V was taking down that turret in the top side. Crazy might even use his in a moment. He will. This might be a full-scale fight here as the Grand Challenge is laid down, established towards Key. There it is, V going to get himself some heal, and TNT is out towards the backside there. Will they come forward here? That's the question. ESC backing up a little bit, and they've given the Dragon over to QG. There's a lot of ultimates they have to respect. Chain of Corruption was down, but still Lissandra had ult. They kited back as a four. That's smart movement from Eva. They lose the Dragon, but not the biggest loss all in all. And Key? Unfortunately, nothing he could do when he was just singled out with no ultimate available at the time. They will have a chance to grab this turret, and they look for even more as they lock up Do and B, but Crazy has to flash away. They still get the turret for that one, though, and you can see V wants to come forward, the one towards Loki, and he rocket jumps away, and Ares is caught in the middle of everything. Swift to come away for kill credit there. A piercing arrow actually connected with TCT. It takes him low, but it doesn't seem like that's enough to dissuade QG from coming forward and chasing on. Fiora has so much mobility. She's going to take the inside track. We're going to see the Trundle Pillar soon. Eva's not out of this yet. Oh, Pillar goes up in the wrong direction though, but Loken caught face to face with Swift, but he had other thoughts, he flashed, he changed course, he gets a knock up towards Loken, and he falls down, ESC, they're being cornered here as well, and there's nothing they can do, double kill going over towards Swift, Key now the target. Even more damage, and Key is just not going to be able to do anything as he tries to take Doonby down with him, but nothing doing at all, Key's taken out by TNT, Athena on the run, and he's got no backup, one arrow will not be enough to take TCT out of the picture, V picks up a kill, and QG do what they do best, Mopping up the team of ever. So much mobility on these carry, and that's not a word that you can level towards Athena. Slowly trying to retreat for the majority of that fight. Eventually caught out, but in general, ever just completely wiped in that fight. Delayed ace coming out there for QG as well. And, you know, people getting, you know, a bit iffy about the use of team fighting kings here, but you can see where QG put their eggs straight in that particular basket. TNT is kicking off. 4-0 and 2 for that man. There's a lot of kills going in the direction of Swift and even V. 2-0 and 6. These key carries are getting the gold and they're getting big. Back in the Kespa Cup, that Athena and Loken's positioning was one of the big factors for this team. They would group their threats and fight smartly around them. So often, Loken has just been well out of position, and whether that's the split cores, whether that's the fact that they're just kind of running in all directions away from the onslaught of the likes of V on this Fiora. Regardless, if they don't position smartly in such a positioning focused comp, it's double AD. These the tank wall needs to be in the front, and the AD carries need to be just pushing down turrets, focusing on those sieges. Of course, we saw in the previous game, things can change very quickly, but the key factor to me, every time people look at this Mundo, he instantly disappears. Still not level 11, 0, 3, and 2. Not even a lot of CS. He's 23 CS behind the Rek'Sai. The Mundo's more of a burden than really a ticking time bomb at this point. Yeah, and this is exactly what we said about Ares the last time around. Uh, he has really had a whole lot of trouble, even on this very powerful champion like Mundo. He has been set behind yet again. And back to Swift, too. I was just talking about how he didn't seem as comfortable when he couldn't pick the kills. Instantly gets two more in his pocket, and all of a sudden, he's looking like he can run over anybody. Very killer instincts to go straight for the throat, and he was able to knock up Loken. A nice flash on Burrow. See a lot of potential flanks coming through this risky play from Eva. He a little bit caught there. Spooky goes for the Swift, got himself into the mix here, but at what cost? Who's going to follow up on it here? Grand challenge to Towards Key, he's definitely in the middle of it. TCT as well got locked up there with a Frozen 2. Key will just drop there. Doon B will be the one to come away with the credit for that one. And Ares now forced to flash it towards the back line. That Mundo isn't really getting to go where he pleases. And Loken, again, we've seen this before. It's happening all over again. Coming forward, the resets are good. And there he goes, the clean up here. This time, forever. And it's a triple for Loken. Insane difference, one fight onto the other. This time, the threats group smartly. This time, the 80s kite back. And this is a familiar story. You get a couple kills around 20 minutes. Goodbye, base. Ever is able to knock down an inhibitor here. They've got a massive wave in the top side. Athena is helping to clear this one out. Another tower falls. The death timers are still ticking away, and Ever can grab even more here, but they're not going to push their luck. They know what happens when they outposition. So the big thing I take away from this team fight is that the difference between V getting the grand challenge down and getting a healing field so they can continue to fight, and in this case, Key just walking around slowly and then dying in the back line. Suddenly, these low health members are all out to the slaughter. Athena, Loken fighting together like I wanted. All at basically full health. And Loken, it's Goomba stomping time for the Tristana and an easy cleanup forever.
back line there well, for ESC was essentially untouched by the time they woke up. So much damage had come in towards those tanks. There's a difference between these five kiting back with the likes of Mundo and Alistair in the front line to disengage and these unorganized fights. When Vayne is coming from one end and Fiora is coming from the other flank, suddenly the five-man group that's very powerful runs in different directions. QG win a fight. If they can just power down mid lane, kite backwards and then clean up, things are very, very different. And now we're seeing Everett just being able to take the fight to QG. Such a bloody game. I love this, too. Almost a kill per minute at this rate. And Ever, the only real difference that we're seeing in their play is that they are just choosing the fights a little bit smarter. They have the positioning, and they know how to use it. But QG oh. are not going to give up that easily. A lot of damage dealt back to them, though. Casual 60% of a health bar, 20 to 30% of the Fiora. And every time one person gets chunked out, suddenly, free turret. See, there is ESC can just walk around it. And this is the core of their composition. The siege is real right now. Piercing Arrow, Glowkin is in the mix as well. Infected Cleavers are coming in. And then if they want to, they can go forward and get the fight going on. This is why they prioritize this Tristana. It does so much damage to take these turrets down the moment the front line's able to do enough. Athena has not been in trouble for some time now. 3 1 and 4, fantastic on this Varus. And you can see why they take it. Why they prioritize oh. it. Do it, Beast chunked out. He's hanging around. This is not smart. The crazy thing is that Doin B on one of the longest range wave clear mages is getting poked to death just trying to clear waves. Varus has so much effective range. And when there's no initiation off from Eris, well, he's getting slightly tanky given that he can take the turret. Speaking of initiation, they're trying something. Villa comes in, Chain of Corruption does actually miss, but the knockup on the two, and you see that exploded TCT. It's like he never existed. And that's one pick, and that's all that ever need to push forward it, again. And look, crazy coming forward. Throws it two towards Doi B. One after another, QG are falling like flies, and ESC are going for the throat. This double AD is doing so much work. It's always a pick and then turrets disappear. They finally corrected their team fight mistakes and the result, at about five minutes of the game time and the game's over. GG, well played. It's all but the rest of QG going down here. Ever has shown that they can outmaneuver and outplay. 13 to 12 is the kill score as they finish off the Nexus. Two to one in favor of ESC Ever. Well, well, well. The scenes that we're seeing here as well and even some head scratching from ESC Ever because of course the game was an absolute seesaw. QG, in that moment where they were chasing Ever down, it was almost a simulated idea of them being ahead, but Ever were quick to prove them wrong. I mean, we talk about seesaws. It felt so momentum-wise, but I think we just kind of talk about these games in the context of previous patches and not 523. Seesaws are when you're fighting for five dragons, when you're fighting for posturing on Baron and Dragon, when turrets are so paper thin and you have double AD. A pick's enough to end a game. It was vindicated in the previous game, and here it was just one smart team fight, base broken, rinse, repeat, game over. Absolutely, and that was all she wrote for that one, that Tristana coming up big yet again. But we're going to let the experts take